Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Cohen. So the ACT science section, a lot of students find it pretty daunting. Uh, let's be honest, there's a lot of information on it, a lot of data, and a lot of really obscure scientific terminology. Once you look past all of that, you'll find that ACT science is actually pretty manageable. A lot of students think that they need to do really well in their high school science classes to do well in the ACT science section, but that's simply not true. In fact, nearly all the questions on the science section are not testing things you've learned in school. Um, only about 5% of the questions will actually ask you about something from biology or chemistry, and even then, it's going to be something pretty basic. What the questions do ask for are basically specific uh, measurements, pieces of data that you can draw from the graphs and charts provided to you. Um, so they're looking for specific measurements and general trends observable in the information. Um, in other words, everything that they're uh, asking you about is going to be right there in front of your eyes on the test. To do well on ACT science, you have to keep your cool. You want to stay collected and focused. The test makers, they want you to go into panic mode when you see all that really strange um, terminology and when you see they've given you three or four different charts or graphs in a single passage. But if you keep your cool and stay collected and work through that information and the questions, you're going to find that it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to share with you five specific strategies that will help you get a great score in the science section. Strategy number one, answer any relevant questions immediately after reading any study, experiment, or opinion. Most students will approach each ACT science passage, of which there are seven, by reading through the entire passage and then answering all the questions. This is a really bad idea because each passage is broken up into a series of different experiments or different opinion pieces. So if you read all of them at once and then answer the questions, you know, each question is based on a specific experiment or study. So by the time you get to the questions, you're likely to have forgotten the information you need. And you're going to end up going back and rereading um, the passage again and burning through really precious time on the test. So when you get to a passage, read the first experiment and then look for questions that ask about that experiment. You'll be able to answer them much more quickly this way. Um, you know, after you do that, just keep moving. Read the second experiment or study, find those questions. On to experiment three, and so on. This is going to save you a lot of time, and it's going to make the question seem a lot easier. Strategy number two, identify and label categories and trends. Anytime you're presented with new data, you want to make sense of it. You want to do so quickly. So if you have a graph, circle the x and the y axes and identify what they're measuring. Then see if there's any clear relationship between the two. Um, is there a linear relationship, for example, where as x increases, y increases? The same goes for charts or tables. You want to identify the headings of each column and ro or row and see what's being measured. And again, look for any um, readily apparent relationship between the things being measured. Um, you can notate in the margins the categories that are being measured so you can write you know uh, light or heat next to a graph that's measuring light or heat and you also want you can note the trends by using arrows which are really quick and clear okay strategy number three don't get bogged down in the technical language yes do read the passage however don't worry about really thoroughly understanding every term you know every definition and me or memorizing them. You simply need to you know, note the term and then move on. Um, espe be especially on the lookout for uh, definitions given in parentheses. Very often these never come up in the question sets. So you know, note this information but don't spend too much time on it. And uh, if it comes up in a question, then you can go back to the passage and find that term and see what the definition is. Strategy four, Improve your speed with timed practice. You only have about five minutes per science passage, so you have to work very quickly. Um, take a lot of time practice tests. Um, you, this is really the best way to improve your timing. You can
can also work on doing individual passages time. So give yourself, you know, about five minutes for each passage. If it's a shorter passage with five questions, you might do four minutes. If it's six questions, you might do five minutes. And if it's uh, a passage comparing two scientific opinions, you might do six minutes. Strategy number five, avoid lengthy calculations. If you find yourself doing a really involved, difficult computation, you've done something wrong. These questions are meant to be answered, and they're written to be answered quickly. Um, so if you find, so there's always a quicker way to find the answer. If you're doing a lot of timely math, stop yourself, look at the charts and graphs and say, wait a minute, you know, how can I extrapolate the information I need from the data given and come up with a rough approximation? ACT science doesn't have to be daunting. With these strategies, you'll be on your way to a better score. If you liked this video, you can subscribe to our channel for more videos like it.